Good or evil, a venerable enlightened master once shared with his disciples a story of an elephant, demonstrating the profound influence of environment and guidance. The teaching was simple yet illuminating, offering a path to transcend evil and embody virtue. Long ago, a king in India owned a mighty elephant. This elephant was fierce and powerful, capable of defeating enemies in battle. When criminals were condemned, the elephant was sent to trample them as punishment. One day, a fire broke out, forcing the elephant to move to a new dwelling. Nearby, there was a temple where a monk recited the sacred teachings of the Buddha. In his recitations, the monk often spoke of this truth. Those who do good ascend to heaven, while those who commit evil fall into the abyss. Listening to the Buddha's words day and night, the elephant's violent nature gradually softened. Compassion took root in its heart. On one occasion, the king ordered the elephant to execute a criminal. Yet when the criminal was brought before it, the elephant merely nudged the man gently with its trunk and walked away. From that day forward, every criminal brought to the elephant was treated in the same merciful manner. The king, displeased, summoned his ministers to seek an explanation. Amidst their discussions, one wise minister said, the elephant's residence is near a temple where it hears the Buddha's teachings daily, fostering compassion. If we now take it to a slaughterhouse where it witnesses constant killing, its violent nature will likely be rekindled. The king agreed and moved the elephant near the slaughterhouse. Day by day, the elephant observed the cruelty and bloodshed its once gentle nature reverted to aggression, growing even more ferocious than before. This story, simple on the surface, carries profound wisdom about the human condition. It illustrates how our hearts, like the elephant, are susceptible to the influences we allow into our lives. Much like the elephant, we are not born with an unchangeable disposition, but rather, our tendencies toward good or evil are shaped by the teachings and experiences that surround us. As the Buddha wisely reminds us in the Dhammapada, verse 183, to avoid all evil, to cultivate good, and to cleanse one's mind. This is the teaching of the Buddhas. This reinforces the core idea that our nature is influenced by our actions, and through conscious cultivation of good, we align ourselves with the Buddha's path. People, like the elephant, are neither inherently good nor evil. Their nature is shaped by the circumstances they encounter. Just as the elephant became compassionate through hearing the Dharma, it reverted to cruelty when surrounded by violence. The same holds true for humans. By seeking the company of wise and virtuous teachers and listening to the teachings of the Buddha, we cultivate goodness and leave behind the path of evil. On the other hand, if one follows corrupt teachers or false doctrines, they may find themselves trapped in the three lower realms – hell, hungry ghosts, animals – with no way to escape. As the Buddha explained in the Mangala Sutta, Senpi 2.4, to live in a suitable environment, to have done meritorious actions in the past, and to set oneself in the right course. This is the highest blessing. This illustrates the importance of creating environments that foster virtue, underscoring how our surroundings directly shape our moral and spiritual growth. Here, the Buddha's teachings serve as a reminder that we are ever in the process of becoming. The mind, much like clay, can be molded by external forces. This is why we are taught to guard the doors of our senses. What we see, hear, and experience shapes the very fabric of our character. By regularly exposing ourselves to wisdom, kindness, and mindfulness, we naturally incline towards virtue. If, however, we immerse ourselves in ignorance, desire, and anger, these seeds will grow within us, leading to harmful consequences not just in this life, but in future existences as well. Thus, good or evil is not fixed in us. Like one who spends time in a fragrant room but no longer notices the scent, 
or one who dwells in a fish market and becomes accustomed to the stench, our environment greatly shapes our nature. Whether we incline toward virtue or vice depends on the company we keep and the teachings we follow. As the Buddha teaches in the Satipatthana Sutta, Men or Ten, guard the doors of the senses, guard them diligently. This reminder encourages us to be mindful of the inputs we allow into our consciousness as they directly influence our inner state. The Buddha Dharma teaches that by planting ourselves in the soil of wholesome environments, much like a seed seeking sunlight, we can flourish. Therefore, it is not enough to simply desire to be good. We must actively surround ourselves with conditions that nurture our goodness. The mind, when left unchecked, easily drifts toward negative habits and inclinations, much like water flowing downhill. Through constant awareness and practice, however, we can direct this current toward liberation and compassion. In our daily lives, let us be mindful of where we place our attention and to whom we give our ears. Let us seek out wise companions on the path and make a concerted effort to immerse ourselves in teachings that uplift, inspire, and awaken. Just as the elephant became merciful in the presence of the Buddha's words, we too can transform through repeated contact with the Dharma. This is not merely an intellectual exercise, but a lived experience that requires dedication, reflection, and the right conditions. The story of the elephant reminds us of the fluidity of our own nature. May we, like that elephant, be transformed by the Dharma. But unlike the elephant, may we protect our newfound wisdom by staying steadfast in virtuous environments. The way we live, the places we dwell, and the people we associate with all contribute to the shaping of our hearts and minds. As the Buddha succinctly said in the Dhammapada, verse 393, One is not born noble, but through noble deeds, one becomes noble. It is said that a single candle can light a thousand others without diminishing its own flame. Let us become that candle, lighting the way for others, and in doing so, affirming the possibility of our collective awakening. If you found value in this discussion and want to continue exploring the depth and wisdom of Buddhism, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Cultivating Buddhism, and share your thoughts in the comments. May the teachings of the Buddha bring you peace and guide you on your path to enlightenment.